This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. I just want to let you know that if I sound a bit weird today, it's because I'm quite deaf. I've got a really bad ear infection. I can't really hear very well at all. And I sound weird to myself, so I'm sure I sound weird to you too. We start with some great news for Aotearoa in the form of a big increase in funding announced on Thursday during the budget to expand national resilience to natural disasters. As detailed in Parliament by Finance Minister Grant Robertson, the funding, 6 billion Kiwi dollars, will initially fund cleanup and recovery from the Auckland floods and Cyclone Gabriel. But once those things have been taken care of, the funding will go towards improving the nation's resilience to natural disasters, including spending three hundred million on road programs to prepare for extreme weather and 120 million dollars over the next four years to expand the country's EV charging network. There's going to be a particular focus on rural areas. I'm sure we're going to have more on this in the coming weeks so keep your eyes peeled. Volkswagen's ID Buzz electric microbus has now been on sale in Europe for a while and both the cargo carrying commercial variant and five-seat minivan are selling well. For now, commercial and passenger variants of the ID Buzz are short wheelbase models, but just as Volkswagen promised last year, long wheelbase variants are entering into the market this year with the US due to only get long wheelbase models. This week, Volkswagen confirmed those long wheelbase models will get their international debut as part of International Volkswagen Bus Day on June 2nd, complete with an official unveiling at Huntington Beach, California. While there won't be any drives available at the event, we will be there to take a peek at these new, longer ID Buzz models. And of course, we'll be sharing everything with you that we can learn from the reveal event. Ever since the Inflation Reduction Act was signed into law last year, we've seen automakers double down their efforts to ensure their EVs are eligible for the new, tougher US federal tax credits. Currently, any EV under US$55,000 or 80000 for pickups and SUVs that isn't made in the US or a country that has a free trade agreement with the US and doesn't use a specific percentage of US sourced or refined materials, isn't eligible for the full $7,500 federal tax credit. And that in turn puts those automakers at a competitive disadvantage. Hyundai Kia is working to build new factories in the US to ensure its EVs become eligible. But until those are complete, we learned this week that it's looking to expand its existing facilities in Mexico to establish EV production lines there in the interim and because of those aforementioned trade agreements, those cars made there will become eligible for tax credits. Our electric vehicles are only as clean as the power used to charge them, and while most grids around the world are cleaner than they were a decade ago, there's a long way to go. Which is why the US EPA has just announced a new proposed carbon pollution standards for fossil fuel-powered plants that it says will accelerate the decarbonisation of the electrical grid. The new standards are designed to help existing generation facilities reduce their emissions by setting emission limits for coal, oil and gas-fired steam generation facilities, gas-fired combustion turbines and place additional restrictions on any new generations planned. We'd of course prefer to see 100% renewables, but these new rules would dramatically reduce existing electrical grid emissions, which is a step in the right direction. Tesla held its annual shareholder meeting this week, where it laid out some of its plans for the future and shareholders voted on some key proposals, including welcoming former CTO JP Straubel back to Tesla as a board member. The event was also a chance for Tesla to show off its latest Cybertruck prototype, tease its next car that it says is already being worked on, and showcase the progress being made with Tesla's autonomous robot projects, aka Optimus Prime or Tesla Bots. Tesla also confirmed that the Tesla Roadster will be delayed again to sometime next year and appeared to suggest Tesla's plans for Cybertruck production volumes now appear smaller than they once were. You'll know we've chosen not to mention the company's CEO by name due to a recent interview in which he doubled down on conspiracy theories, anti-Semitism and other 
troubling statements, none of which that we, with good conscience, can condone or report on. Earlier this year, we told you about Ford's new all-electric e-transit courier, an electric variant of the popular European market transit courier. That vehicle, which sadly is built on a shared internal combustion and EV platform, might not have the longest range, but at the time we noted it would be likely a good choice for many small business owners in Europe. And this week, that same van got a passenger-carrying sibling in the form of the e-Torneo courier. While there's no official B-roll available of this new model, the images shared by Ford show a five-seat people carrier or multi-activity vehicle with a sizable load bay. It won't be a long-distance hauler, but for minicab operators and families alike, I think this is going to be well worth a look. Expect official pricing to follow by the end of the year, with deliveries due early next. When it comes to electric hypercars, there are few as expensive, desirable or quick as the Rimats Nevera, a limited production hand-built car that only the wealthiest can afford. Essentially the living embodiment of a bedroom wall halo car, Rimats announced this week the successful breaking of an eye-watering 23 performance records on the same day. It achieved the 0 to 400 kilometers per hour, that's 249 miles per hour to zero sprint in 29.93 seconds, beating the previous record holder by more than a second. In doing so, it also set 22 other speed and acceleration related records, including a new 1.81 second stoplight sprint to 100 kilometers per hour, that's 62 miles per hour, and an 8.25 second quarter mile. Congratulations to everyone at Rimats who made it possible. From one type of quick to another now, with the official unveiling of Ample's next generation battery swap station in San Francisco this week. Unlike the previous version of Ample's battery swap stations, which took around 10 minutes to swap out the specially designed battery packs of customers' vehicles, the new swap stations take around 10 minutes to achieve the same task, can now accommodate much larger vehicles like delivery vans and can be assembled in far less time than their predecessors. Ample is still focusing on fleet customers at this time, so think rideshare companies and commercial delivery firms. And you you do still need to have an Ample adapted EV to use the stations, but Ample's end goal is to design and offer battery swaps for all EVs on sale. That is, as well as working with automakers like Fisker to design compatible battery packs from the get-go. We regularly hear studies stating that people will go electric once EVs have ranges in excess of three or 400 miles per charge, sometimes even more. But data just released from the Department of Energy's Vehicle Technologies Office in the US shows that while there are now some truly impressive long-legged vehicles on sale today in the US, like the Lucid Air Range Dream Edition, the median range of all electric vehicles sold in the 2022 model year lineup was 257 miles or 414 kilometers. While that is up slightly on last year's median value, it's actually slightly down on 2020's figure and reminds us that while there are far longer range models available, most people are quite fine and dandy with more modest offerings. Given that EV sales are continuing to rise, it's becoming harder for range to be used as an excuse. The first roadster to wear the MG badge in what feels like a lifetime, the MG Cyberster, will officially debut later this year as a production vehicle, and now we have an idea as to the price. According to UK magazine Autocar, MG is said to be targeting a starting price of around £55,000 sterling, around US$68,000 equivalent. While the price is for the rear-wheel drive variant with a 227 kilowatt motor, an all-wheel drive variant with close to 400 kilowatts at the wheels and sub three second sprint is said to be coming for around £10,000 sterling more. And while that might seem quite expensive, remember that the UK prices include GST at 20%. So that puts the Cybster in both guises into a pretty competitive spot, in my opinion. Before we get to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car? 
if you are and you are in Aldara, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can use, and of course, how to get charging at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. Electric vehicles have long attracted the interest of famous Hollywood sorts, and I've met plenty of them at events over the years. To date, most famous folks getting into the EV world have been interested in new electric cars. But this week, a trailer dropped for a new TV series on HBO that is a little different. Called Downey's Dream Cars, it's a new TV series that premieres next month and features Robert Downey Jr.'s sizable collection of classic cars, some of which he wants to convert to cleaner, greener forms of motive power. That means electric conversions, a hybrid conversion, and apparently at least one biofuel conversion. I think I also spied Rich and the team from the Electrified Garage in the trailer. It won't be everyone's cup of tea, but if it's going to get more people interested in electric vehicles, I think it's a good thing. And finally, last month we broke the sad news that the Chevrolet Bolt EV and Bolt EUV were going to end production at the end of this year in the US, and I've heard from some of you that customers are getting pressured to change their existing orders or buy a vehicle that's already been made. So when we heard this week that a Chevrolet Bolt EUV claimed a record distance per charge travelled to coincide with the Bolt EUV's market debut in Brazil, we were pretty intrigued. While we're still trying to figure out how the EUV has just been introduced into the Brazilian market if it's ending sales this year, a team of more than 70 people drove three Bolt EUVs on a circular test track to try and break the efficiency record. The winning car managed to travel 901.8 kilometres on a single charge at speeds that were well, well below surface street traffic jams in a big city. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, make sure that you switch to Altara's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week with our usual roundup and we'll be back with more awesome content very soon. As will the lovely Gavin Kiwi Evie Shoebridge. He's been really busy of late, so make sure you check out all of his cool content on this very channel. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.